two and two road trip and a chance to see some of the bigger impressions John Hines can make on this team, Kirsten and I make our predictions on who will come out ahead the most in the full throttle Hines era. And how will the Wild fare in this week's play? Plus, let's hear it for the PWHL Minnesota. Forward and gold medalist Kelly Panic joins to recap training camp, pregame fits, and much, much more in this week's episode of Bar Down Beauties. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Soda Stick, presented by Talk North, Greenbelt, Livia, Royal Credit Union, and Jim Beam. This is Season 5, Episode 207. Want a surefire sign it's hockey season in the state of hockey? The Minnesota Wild and Soda Stick collaborations are back and better than ever. Soda Stick unveiled its first team-issued design of the year, the Deweys, now available to purchase exclusively at the Hockey Lodge. More team-centric gear to come, plus, as always, Soda Stick has you geared up for all things Minnesota sports at SodaStick.com. Don't forget to smash that code BARDOMBEAUTIES at checkout for 15% all purchases at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated. Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Bar Down Beauties, episode 207. We are lucky to be joined by one of Minnesota's finest athletes, finest female hockey players, hockey player in general, Kelly. I'm just going to kick it off with that, saying Kelly Panic, now joining the podcast. What's going on? How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Happy to be here with you today. You know, first things first, obviously, part of PWHL Minnesota. Just what does that mean? You've been involved in hockey your entire life, but to have a professional team here in Minnesota, the Whitecaps had done it to great fanfare and success, and I have no doubt the PWHL Minnesota is going to do the same. Yeah, it's uh, it's really exciting. I think, I mean, for my the last four or five years, I always forget how long I've been out of college. Um, it's just been kind of a mess. I mean, just even trying to explain <laughs> it to fans and to people that even are knowledgeable about it to try to explain kind of what the landscape of professional women's hockey is or was, um, was quite difficult. And I just now we're at the point where um, I get to show up to the rink every day. I don't have to worry about if there's going to be coaches on the ice, if there's going to be people on the ice with us, what we're doing. Um, That aspect of it has been really awesome. And then just the professional treatment, um, not just for the players, but also for staff and other people involved with the sport from media outlets to um, hopefully fans as well. What was training camp like? Again, that's another element. I mean, things are moving along quickly, but also very professionally, not to say again, it was wrong, right, wrong or bad or indifferent the other way, but from camp now to opening, uh, what was that like? And what was the, what has the experience been like up until this point with the season opening up here in January? Yeah, I mean, it truly was um, a preseason where people were fighting for jobs, fighting for contracts. Um, teams did it differently. Um, I feel like Natalie with our team, she did. She wanted it to be competitive, high energy, but she also wanted us to, you know, start building as a team as well. And it is like it's been that I think that's one of the things that's been different from past iterations of professional women's hockey is there is some of that cutthroat nature of being a part of a professional sport, being a professional athlete. Um, there's the uncertainty of it, but I felt like we had a really good uh, preseason, really good training camp, really good, great energy and um, good people uh, within our program. What can fans expect? I know you had mentioned it's hard to put into words like what the landscape has looked like, but again, now as we narrow in on the start of the season under this new era, what do you think fans will expect? I mean, playing at XL Energy Center is going to be quite the experience too. Yeah, hopefully we get a lot of fans um, out to support us and fill fill that arena up. So that's first and foremost. Hopefully, you know, I think they're going to find it to be very physical. That's something I think the leaders of the league have been really um, advocating for is, you know, especially along the walls. Like if you wouldn't call it a men's hockey game, don't call it in this, um, which is exciting. It's mm-hmm. kind of it's a different adjustment for for some people and for some of us to to get used to. And that body contact that happens now, it's the, the rules are hopefully more defined in it. So physical, fast pace, a lot of skill. Um, I think it's going to be, I mean, we only play, I think, 24 regular season games. So different from some men's hockey or the NHL where they're playing 82. 
um, 24, there's definitely, you're able to put, you know, your all into every single game. And I expect a lot of um, high quality hockey to be played. I mean, no shortage of hockey for you though. You are getting ready to gear up with team USA. Tell me about what's going on for the women's championships and what you're going to be competing in internationally with team USA. Once again, it's not your first rodeo. Certainly you've got a couple of medals uh, to your name up until now. Yeah. So we have um, international breaks throughout the season and, we're actually on one right now um, for a rivalry series. We play U.S. and Canada, and I know other countries. Um, we have another Czech teammate who she went back, I think, to Sweden to play with the Czech national team, which is great for those nations as well. But for us, um, U.S., Canada, um, we play them two more times here in December and then three times in February in the lead up to the World Championship. Um, and for us, that's a team that everyone's still trying to make. So there's always that kind of motivation to – put your best foot forward. Obviously you're trying to be a part of a successful winning team in these short series, but you're also, you know, trying to improve and grow with the team and within yourself as well. So definitely busy, but um, that's a lot of really exciting stuff. What's your worst part about traveling and what's your favorite part about traveling? Cause obviously when you're doing these trips too, you get a little bit of time, but I imagine not much because you're there on business at the same time. Right? Yeah. It, I think, well, with these U S trips, um, our schedules are pretty open. Actually, we have like a practice usually a day and some meetings, but it's nothing too crazy. Um, I think when we travel with our PWHL teams, it's going to be more business. Like you're in, you're out, um, go there to play a game, leave the next day or that night, whatever it may be. Um, my least favorite part is having to like unpack a suitcase. So in a U.S. trip <laughs> or a trip with the U.S. team, when we're going to multiple stops, it's like, okay, I got to, unpack some stuff and I got to repack and it happened. It feels like it's happening all the time. Um, I think my favorite part is just how much it like breaks up the, the week or, you know, the month, whatever it may be, and just be able to see some pretty cool places or just different places that I wouldn't normally, normally go to. That makes sense. Uh, how much thought goes into the fit, the pregame fit? I know obviously there's been a lot made about the NHL players doing it, NBA, NFL, but I mean, girls got some drip too, right? How much thought goes into your outfits each and every time before you walk into a rink? That's a great question. I think the WNBA actually is, or they really started it, I think. Um, they started that <laughs> movement, but I think it'll be something like when I'm on a trip and I'm packing, it's, I'm kind of trying to play a little bit of, okay, well, how much space do I have? I think what we'll see is at home, home games will be able to pop off a little bit more there. But I'm a pretty simple, like I'm not a t- too flashy of a dresser. So yeah, I might leave some of the more uh, stylish outfits to my teammates. Who would, which one of your PWHL Minnesota teammates is going Ooh. to have the most style? Who's Who's got it? That's a very good question. I think it'll be interesting because some of them I haven't ever seen them dress for a game day. I could yeah. have a few in mind that will take it take it pretty seriously. Taylor Heise usually puts some thought into her outfits. I think Nicole Hensley will always have great shoe game. That is a must for <laughs> okay. her. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Uh, Sophia uh, Cunnan, formerly Shaver. Yep. You'll see a lot of probably neutrals or blacks on her, but um, she always looks looks pretty sharp. When it comes to your shoe game, are we going Nikes? Are we going flats, heels? What is the thought there? I'm I'm partial to like the dress and tennis shoes lately these days, but that's also because I'm old. What's your preference? Yeah, I think a little bit of a mix of both. I have, you know, some different boots that sometimes they have a heel, sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes it'll be a pair of, of Nikes or other sneakers. And uh, when we have like world championships that are like in the spring and it's, you know, April, um, and it's warmer out, then I might go with like a flat, but I mix, I mix it up a fair bit. I feel like. There you go. You got to mix it up once in a while. How is the team going to mix it up in the PWHL in general? What does the team look like? Again, as you'd mentioned, a lot of players and faces that you're not quite familiar with, obviously, but what do you think that is going to be the brand? I've heard speed is going to be the number one thing that PWHL Minnesota is going to really lean on. Yeah, I think speed and physicality and creativity um, I think that's something that our coaching staff has really emphasized is like that Minnesota brand of hockey. And I think it's, let's play fast. Let's play aggressive. Let's be creative when we have the puck and try to make plays. But ultimately um, the more we can have the puck on our stick or our team stick and in the offensive zone and creating chances, um, that's when we're at our best. And I think we saw that in our preseason games in Utica as well. Just again, pushing that tempo, playing smart. Sometimes it doesn't always mean taking someone on one-on-one, but okay, can you hold on to the puck and find that next passing lane or find the next shooting lane? 
What's one misconception that you're constantly hearing about women's hockey or girls' hockey? Maybe something that you've even heard since you were a young kid. Is it mostly about the quote-unquote no-hitting, no-checking aspect? Or what's one thing that you're kind of always trying to dispel that we can share with our audience to remind them, like, hey, girls' and women's hockey is a hell of a lot of fun to watch as well? Yeah, I think the the physicality, like the hitting piece is definitely the biggest. And I think, honestly, in the next handful of years, especially with our league and then, I mean, we've seen it in, in Sweden, um, they have hitting leagues that, you know, girls can check in. So I think it's kind of the way the game is going towards on the women's side. But even without the rules defining it, um, the higher up you get in women's hockey, the more physical it is. And I think that's the same on the boys' side, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I think people, it surprises people how, I think, skilled we actually are. And I think a lot of that is because whether you grew up, like I grew up playing boys hockey. So I grew up having to figure out how to navigate time and space while, you know, avoiding a check here or there. Um, but because there isn't quote unquote open ice hits, um, you see a lot of playmaking, a lot of speed. And I think people just immediately jump to that. Oh, there's no hitting. So it's not entertaining. Well, the reality is, is most of the time it's pretty entertaining regardless of no huge open ice hits. It's so much fun. It's so freaking fast. I mean, that's what I wish the Minnesota Wild could take some of your guys' speed from the women's game because they certainly can't figure that out to save their life. Uh, But that's neither here nor there. Uh, Kind of final question, Kelly. Just and it's it's a softball. It's an easy one. How important is this going to be for girls and women's, not just here in Minnesota and in the Midwest, but across in all of the PWHL cities? I mean, again, we've seen it grow and we've seen things continue to be exciting for the girls women's game, but there's still a long way to go in order to get it closer and closer to where the men's is. How much is this PWHL Minnesota and PWHL going to help? Yeah, I think it's just, it's the accessibility piece, not just, um, you know, the games, but also, Hey, who do you play for? And it's a very clear answer. I play for PWHL Minnesota or Boston or Montreal or New York or Ottawa, Toronto, all the teams. And I think it's only going to keep growing. And then I think it just gives young girls a team or a person to be a fan of. Um, to go watch their games, to follow along, to keep track of, to, hey, when I want to go play college hockey, I want to go play in the PWHL. Um, It gives a very clear, like, defined path for a career. Um, For so many people, it used to be, I want to play an Olympic team. Mm -hmm. And that is, like, a a great honor and a great, you you know, fortune to be able to do that. But the reality is, is that for majority of the people that have ever played women's hockey, that you not everyone can make it there. Um, so it gives, you know, something bigger to dream about. I I always go back to thinking about for boys, most of them grow up dreaming of winning a Stanley cup, right? Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't sit there and say, Oh, I want to be an Olympian. I want to win an Olympic gold medal. And for all of us, that was kind of what you had. So I think just giving that another step to where you're, being able to actually play hockey longer. I mean, I think of all the teammates that I've had in the, or from college that their hockey career was over when it didn't necessarily have to be, but it just was because there wasn't really a great option for them or it didn't make sense. And I think of all of the girls in college now that, you know, when they graduate, there is that next option. And for all those high school girls and youth, youth girls around the country um, that, you know, can learn about it, watch it, um, see it, that that's what they can dream about being a part of. Exactly. Well, again, season opening up here in January. Cannot wait for you guys to get started. Best of luck in the rivalry series. Go kick some Canada ass because we all love to see that. Uh, Kelly, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here. Give yourself the gift of good health with Livia Weight Control Centers and their extended Black Friday offer. Join Livia today and receive up to 50% off your own personalized program. With the one-on-one help from my Livia team at the Woodbury Center, I've dropped more than 30 pounds in three pant sizes thanks to their weekly support. You can too. Sign up today and take part in Livia's best offer of the year and get a jump start on those weight loss resolutions by calling 855-GO-LIVIA or visit livia.com. All right. Thanks again to Kelly. Kirsten, I'm sorry you had to miss out on an exciting interview, but I know you're just as pumped as I am to get the PWHL season going here in just a few short weeks. Absolutely. I'm bummed I got to miss the interview or not got to, had to. (laughs) I have to make some money. Got a dog here that I need to support. Um, But no, very excited for PWHL. Excited to make it out to some games. 
lot going on in the next couple months here in Minnesota. Hey, no better time than hockey season. Minnesota Wild are feeling better about the direction that their hockey season is going. Obviously closing up a road trip two and two. Uh, Kirsten, it feels right now like this is very much John Hines's team. Now we had been talking about before last week, like still a lot of Dean Evson on there, still a lot of systems, but it felt like, especially in that Seattle game where John Hines completely recalibrated the line combinations in some combinations we hadn't even ever seen before, or just not at length. That was, I think one big move or for John Hines. And I think moving forward, we're going to see more and more changes where it will start to look like Mr. Hines's squad. I will say I'm not a hundred percent sold on John Hines yet, just because we knew once Dean was fired and once it was announced Hines was coming in as the new head coach, I was very skeptical. I still have my reservations, but I will say very happy to see lines shaken up that I love to see if something's not working, don't try to continue to try to fit it into a mold. That's just not working. So that I did love to see. I feel that's something, at least here in Minnesota, we really haven't. So I'm excited to see what's to come as far as that goes. I mean, who do you think is going to succeed? We asked this in our up for debate, and I kind of threw out some random names, but who do you think is really going to come to fruition? I mean, Matt Boldy looks like the easy one right now. He's looking Mm -hmm. pretty shifty. Again, not just, excuse me, in the goal scoring department, which what a freaking beauty of a, a goal he scored against the Kraken. But his, he seems comfortable in himself again. I think you're missing a lot of that. He's obviously the one. Who else do you think is really going to rise to the top under new manage or not under new management, under new bench boss with John Hines? I mean, I think the, this other one is another really easy one to grab just because he's been doing so well. Connor Dewar, I, he's yeah. somebody who's really stepped up and really started to not so much emerge from the shadows, but he's just a quieter guy, but he's been very loud on the ice, which has been awesome to see somebody we haven't seen a lot from that. We need to, there's two people, Kirill Kaprizov, obviously mm-hmm. Russo was the one who tweeted yesterday. He has three even strength goals so far this season. We're a third of the way through the season. And then Marcus Johansson being the second one. So mm-hmm. those are two people really need to see, get something going here pretty soon. Where is the concern level at for you when it comes to Kaprizov? I've been trying to like, be even keeled, but we're in December. We're in mid December at this point. I don't remember. I I should look this up and I probably will while you're giving your spiel, but like Mm -hmm. it didn't take him this long to get it together last year. Like, what do you think Kirill needs to have happen in order for him to refine himself and refine his game? Cause as Dean Evson did point out last year, there was the different off season. He wasn't able to skate. So that's why we're not Mm -hmm. seeing the edges. Like we're accustomed to from Kirill. But again, by mid-December, you would have expected that to change and improve by now. This is the hard thing because I don't want to be super critical because I've already been critical. And I'm trying to give benefit of the doubt because there's so much we don't know behind the scenes. Like when Dean said he still thinks that injury Kaprizov had last season is still lingering, still playing a big part. He didn't get to have an offseason to really just kind of continue to grow he was just kind of stunted from that injury whether that be the case right now or not we don't know we're probably not going to know until at least the end of the season usually the Mm -hmm. way it goes but I mean not even necessarily thinking of that I'm very concerned I've been concerned I just your star player on the team you need to see more from and we just he's been so quiet do you think putting him with Eric Jules Eriksson-Eck and Matt Boldy is going to help? And then also putting Marcus Johansson with Marco Rossi and Matt Zuccarello. Do you think that might help shake both of those players that you had mentioned need to get going? I know you were probably particularly pumped to see Jules up on that top line. Oh my God. You have no idea. I saw that line <laughs> combo and I was like, I've been asking for this since last year. You, I think, said it wasn't going to happen. And now here we are. I said it wouldn't happen under Dean. I said as long as Dean Epson is not head coach, it won't happen, which I was correct on. I pull up the receipts. I want to find that exact quote. But you know I love Jewel. Uh, He just makes me so happy. So, yes, I loved, loved that. Um, I, especially considering the season Marco Rossi has had, I can only imagine that that's going to get Johansson going. And if it doesn't, then (laughs) we've got some bigger issues um there's that thought I don't know I don't know Kirill I'm just concerned line changes yes that might help but at this point I'm kind of I don't 
know, not knowing right. everything that he's probably going through, whether it be injury still lingering or not. I don't know what you do. Is Gus Bus back? Now he is four and one under John Hines has allowed just six goals in that span. Is he the clear cut number one? I mean, certainly John Hines is playing him like he is the clear cut number one. And he's been playing tremendous, including his second shutout of the season against Seattle. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury, I think, has looked good when he stepped in. But mm -hmm. is Philip Gustafson going to be the number one? We, we had questions. We knew coming into the season he was going to be. And then he kind of floundered. Is he ready to take on that role? I think so. I mean, we saw it last year where he really rose up when people counted him out. And I mean... This goes for everybody. Everybody kind of goes through a slump here and there. It's just how long does it take you to pull yourself back out? And maybe he was just, maybe all it was was just like a few off games and now he's found his groove again. Um, Especially, you've heard it the whole time, ride the hot hand of the goaltender. So if Gus is doing well right now, why would you mess with a good thing? Yeah, I'm all for Gus Bus taking over that lead. As long as Marc-Andre Fleury can get his wins that he needs to past Patrick Waugh for second all time. That's what I'm really Absolutely. looking out for just for my boy flower. I think Bill Guerin also really wants to see that happen. Everybody wants to see that happen. It will in due time. And it should happen at home because then it gives me more to talk about and write about. And I get to yeah, cover that. And fans want to see that too. At yes. home. All the flowers. Like and he probably wants it in flowers. front of his family too. So yeah. Yeah. There we go. Make it happen. Uh, Zach Bogosian returned from an upper body injury and looked absolutely fantastic. I don't know. I When Zach Bogosian came in, I was kind of like, eh, not thrill, whatever, like cool, Bat Maroon has a buddy with him. Um, but do you think we can expect more out of him, especially with, I'm sorry, Jonas Brodeen being week to week? Um, we'll get into that. But Zach Bogosian. I have so much to say about that. <laughs> you know. I know. I have so I much to say about that. I know. Is Bogosian going to be a bigger role player than maybe we anticipated again, given the injury and then also not given the injury too, just in general? Because personally, I would rather see him and Dakota Burmis than other players that continue to be on the ice because of Alex injuries. Alex Belagowski, John Merrill. Oh my God, I can't. I don't know how many times we have to say, I think I tweeted out this week. I was like, I'm just a girl standing in front of a team asking you to stop playing these players. Like, please mm -hmm. stop playing these players. Like Dakota Burmis isn't that bad. Put him in. Do it. But anyway, Zach Bogosian, what are your thoughts? He's going to be a bigger role because he has to be. And because we've got some bad defensemen on our team that we are going to be seeing a lot more of because we don't have other options. Mm -hmm. um, so I just I don't think that there's any way he doesn't step up and make louder presence now in that Seattle game too, defense was better still have my concerns that's still like the red flag for me um changing up the defensive pairings a little bit too now that unfortunately Jonas Brodeen is out I'm a little nervous too about the new pairings it was interesting Very Middleton nervous, and actually Middleton and Faber didn't look bad though right no, like but and also they played together before, like Goligoski so. and what Spurgeon like yeah so Spurgeon's just going to be covering for Golgoski the whole time. Fab Middleton doesn't worry me that much. Middleton is fine. And then with Faber, too, I think that'll be good. But then you have, what, Mermis and Merrill paired together. And I just... Yeah. <sighs> it's not it's not pretty. No. Not, not pretty at all. Uh, you know, Jared Spurgeon obviously delayed his debut with an injury this year. So the Wild have played without him. But how much of a bigger impact to me, Jonas Brodeen not being there is a bigger impact. Now, Brodeen, I think, has had, again, a little bit of an interesting year. He hasn't quite found his full groove, um, but I love him and Brock Faber together. I think that's worked mm -hmm. out absolutely fantastic. So I think missing him is going to be harder than when they were missing Spurge. And again, that's not to discredit Spurge, but that's just that's a big hole on defense and on special teams that you have to fill now. No, I agree 100 percent. And I think at the end of the day, too. Brodeen is just a better defenseman than Spurgeon is. And so yeah. that's my opinion. Um, I, I don't know. Those are just two veteran presences. They bring different things to the ice when each of them are out there. And Brodeen being out is just a huge, it's something the, it was the wild were finally starting to get in their groove again. That happens. And then it's mm -hmm. just kind of like you're breathing a sigh of relief and the air is just immediately sucked back out of the room. Do we want to talk about the hit? I know yes. you had quite the eventful I have a lot weekend uh, with Edmonton Oilers fans finding our account. Um, 
you know, initially watching it in actual play, I was like, uh, maybe obviously seeing replays in different angles of it for sure. I mean, he showed the numbers was he, it just, it shouldn't have happened. And it's a very Evander Kane thing to do. Um, but I think your point about consistency, Kirsten is the bigger problem. So share that with everybody just to a more nail in the, in the heart of others out there. I am trying to gather all of my thoughts here on this one because there's so much and I'm trying to just pull myself back just a little bit. Um, did not expect that video to get as much like it was very divided. Like a lot of people are like, no, like I totally agree with you. Like this is whatever. Yeah. And then like all of the Edmonton Oilers fan base and Evander Kane stands found the video and they're just like, you're dumb. Like no this hey, was thanks for hit. contributing to our views though and like increasing our exposure so you you really yeah. put one out there for the team on giving yeah you know it wasn't i was at target fighting with fighting for my life on twitter against edmonton oilers wasn't on my saturday morning to-do list but <laughs> regardless uh there we were um and here i thought a bikini video would have been our best hit of the week but apparently not apparently all i need to uh say some slander against Evander Kane and people will go. Yeah, but I think it over the years has been very warranted. When your <laughs> own teammates, at least in San Jose, didn't like you, I think that says enough. That's um, true. No, I, I didn't like the hit. Now, one of the criticisms I think I received, not even so much just to me, but like people referring to like, Torts saying the game's getting soft players need to learn how to protect themselves all of that I love a physical game everyone who knows me knows that I love that I love good defensive play I love the fighting I don't want that to be taken out of the game but when you have a player who clearly checks you from behind right in the numbers right into the boards at least at the minimum a boarding call doesn't get called but then in Buffalo the next night you see a boarding call called for almost an identical play. And I, I'm going to, how I'm going to say his name wrong. Akpozo, how Buffalo, I feel Ocposo. like. Yes. yes. When he called it out too, he's like, players are confused. Mm -hmm. You saw this play where Brodeen went down with an injury. You don't get called for boarding. And then here tonight in our game, it's, a, it's a call. So it's like, what is it at the end of the day? Like, I think everyone's just confused. Fans are confused for what is a legal hit, what's not, or what's boarding and what's not boarding. And players too, they're like, well, what can we do? So I think just NHL officiating has been an issue, but the inconsistencies now, which we have seen, has become a much larger issue that needs to get figured out. If not now, this off season, they've got to come to a consensus and I get it. I'm not trying to harp on officiating because especially in real time, you don't see everything crystal clear. I get it. It's hard, especially in the moment to make a decision. I think the biggest slap in the face was when uh, the department of player safety then took a look at it and just basically gave Kane a warning. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about Ryan Hartman as a repeat offender, <laughs> Evander Vander Kane isn't, and you're just going <sighs> to give him a warning slap on the wrist. Like, I think that was arguably a bigger slap in the face. Yeah, that's fair. And of course, I mean, as a fan of different teams, you're going to have your own narrative, right? So that's why I always find it funny when it's all of a sudden, oh, well, you're an Oilers fan. Of course, you're going to see it differently, which is fine. That's great. That's all fun and games. Just don't be sitting here calling my friends dumb blondes because that ain't it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be honest. Like, I wasn't even at first, I was very taken aback because yeah. when I started, like, my phone started blowing up with notifications on Twitter. Shout out Tim Peel for bringing a lot more attention to that. <laughs> um, your Twitter followers and everyone else on your side of the interwebs sure had a lot to say to me. So thank you. Um, I was we should just get him target. on the pod. We should just see what, what's up. No, I tweeted at him. He said he would. So <laughs> here we go. He said he would. I think that's something we need to do. I think it would be a very interesting episode. Uh, maybe we could all learn a lot. But I was just at Target and my phone's blowing up. I have people, this banana head guy tweeting at me, like saying like, <laughs> this is my girlfriend, like whatever. And I was like calling me a dumb blonde. And I just think I wasn't mad. Like truly I was laughing through it. And I love a competitive argument over sports. Like that's one thing yes. I've missed 
And I think the biggest thing that like irked me more was there was like female Oilers fans like tweeting at me saying like, you're playing the victim, blah, blah, blah. I think that's what irked me the most of everything. I was just like, not so much women against women, but it's just like women being nasty to other women, I think was Mm -hmm. what actually kind of irked me a little bit. Right. Nope. I think you stood your ground. I'm proud of you. (sighs) I was doing a Christmas pub crawl, which I'm far too old for. I don't recommend that. Zero out of 10, recommend that to nobody. Um, But, you know, we gave it an effort, so I couldn't be your white white knight, but I knew you could handle it. Uh, Let's look ahead. Maybe you'll be my white, my knight in shining armor. Someday. Yeah. Um, I'll be waiting for that. Let's look ahead to this week. All right, Kirsten. Um, I believe I was c- completely accurate in my predictions this week. Was I not? I think, I think you were. I and think I, I got was. one right. Yes. Win against so, Seattle. Kudos to us. Um, another kind of testy schedule. They host the Calgary Flames on Thursday, hosting the Canucks Saturday afternoon. Then go to Pittsburgh on Monday and first of a back-to-back because they're in Boston on Tuesday. What do you got for the week? Oof. Calgary. That was a winnable game. Mm -hmm. I think they win against Calgary. Okay. They lose to Vancouver. Vancouver's too hot. Okay. Pittsburgh, they should win. Okay. And then I think you split with Boston. You split with Boston. What does that mean? You said there's back. No, no. I thought you meant back to back, like Boston. I mean, Boston Boston comes here like a day or two later, but no, seriously, they. If they beat Pittsburgh, then they lose in Boston, is what you're trying to say. Yeah, they lose right. in Boston, then yes. Okay. Okay. And then That's, the next like time it. Boston comes back, like two days later, they win. That's what I meant. Um, I'm gonna go victory against Calgary. I'm gonna go victory against Vancouver. Ooh. You know what? I'm gonna go victory against Pittsburgh. Bo- loss in Boston. <laughs> Three and one for your wild. I will say I think it'll be an overtime win against Vancouver. That just sounds like a fun Saturday. Really? It just, you know, overtime hockey, Saturday afternoon. It's early. It's an early game for us, which we love. We do love that. We do. So we got that going for ourselves as well. But yeah, three, one, two, and two. Okay. Good work. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Always love to hear your game predictions. Um, how do you think they're going to do? Am I crazy drinking too much Kool Aid saying they're going to go three? I don't know. What am I thinking? You have Halsey. been drinking a lot of the Kool Aid, and meanwhile, I'm still <clears throat> just trying to be nice. As hell, I know. I just got to be the up and up, the upbeat one. You know, there's a problem when I have to be the cheery pl- person on this podcast. I'm sorry. I feel like I've been through a lot this season. Now I lose protein. <laughs> like, give a girl a break. There's only uh, so much I can take. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Speaking of good things, though, in hockey. What is your favorite hockey moment of this past week? Ooh, let's have Jesse start this week because I yeah. did not come prepared. <sighs> Every week we ask the same questions in I and know, out. I know, and I always forget. <laughs> um, this week I really love, so Edmonton does this like next gen generation game or whatever. Have you seen this? <sighs> yes, I saw and, it. And they had Olivia. a young gal, a 12 year old um who did kind of their social media and was asking all the players, like, what did you want to be when you were 12? And I don't know. There's just something so authentic and so genuine about those moments when kids get to step into those roles. Again, when I was a kid, I didn't even know it really was an option. And that's not because I was a woman. I just had never really heard about that career. Right. Like I just didn't consider sports broadcasting, sports journalism. Um, Obviously social media was not a thing back in my day, really. So uh yeah, I just think that's always kind of cool, just expanding the game, getting younger kids involved, especially a franchise like Edmonton, right? I mean, she gets to talk to mm-hmm. Connor McDavid and Leandre Seidel and, and some of the best of the best. So way to go, Con. Way to give her a good answer. He actually was kind of fun and very forthcoming in that as well, which I appreciated. Do you know who else was that I was going to talk about? Leon Seidel. Yes. Like, all right, guys, a little personality like that young girl. She did better work than uh, any of us adults could do getting that personality out. So I love no, to see honestly, that. she did. And I think yeah. I forget who it was. Was it with McDavid or Dry Sile? She like kind of called. She chirped him a little bit, like yeah. called him out. She did. She's, she's like, gonna... I've gotten that answer so many times. <laughs> she's going to have like, a great I future. I love you. I know. Ugh. Ooh, you know what? No, this one, it was just kind of really cool to see. And I think it speaks to kind of bringing more attention to the game. I don't, I think it's too early to say growing the game, but I love when like sports worlds collide. 
this week I'm talking about NHL, NFL, uh, Chicago Blackhawks telling Travis Kelsey that he can come out <laughs> and skate with them anytime. Travis Kelsey talking about it on their New Heights podcast with Jason. And I always forget that the Kelsey brothers like played hockey. Yeah. So just kind of seeing them get into it and bring more attention to the game and just their humor. I'm going to say that is my favorite moment. Blackhawks did something right. So good for them. Good for them. Uh, let us know your favorite hockey moments. Again, maybe your kiddo scored their first goal. Maybe mom got on the ice for the first time or dad. Who knows? I would love to hear your hockey moments uh, as in addition to what you think about the Minnesota Wild this week. We are going to wrap it up. Shout out as always to our friends at Talk North, Soda Stick, Grain Belt, Royal Credit Union, Jim Beam, and Livia Weight Control Centers. Uh, our next live show, December 28th at Wild Boar in Oakdale. Cannot wait. Going to be a ton of fun. Uh, $6 Northeast pitchers as well. So it's holiday break, holiday season. The stress of Christmas is gone. Now you're in that weird limbo stage. So why not come out and celebrate that weird limbo stage with us, the Buttes, 7 p.m. at Wild Boar courtesy of our friends at green belt uh that's gonna do on behalf of myself kirsten and fred have a great rest of your week go wild